All done eight seven. We are joined uh, on stage. I was gonna say in studio, but this isn't really a studio. On stage with uh, an up and comer. I'll is go that, with that. Is that is that? Yeah. It sounds so lame. <laughs> it's not an up and comer. Uh, Amy Shark, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, thank you for being here. There is uh, a couple of things I want to get to, but first, let's kind of like do a very quick rundown. Uh, you tell me what about this is wrong. Uh, was working a job as a video editor? Correct. Making music? Yeah. Fast forward through a bunch of stuff, I'm sure. Uh, a song named Ador called Adore uh, uh, came out, took off. You've got three out of three right. Fame, riches, fortune, and all oh, of that stuff has apart from that one. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're on our way. By the time people see this, I'm sure that will be the case. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Um, I was wondering if you could help us kind of fill in uh, some of the blanks in there because that is the, uh, that's the easy cliff notes. Uh, you have lived this. You have experienced this. Uh, and, and we kind of want to know about it. When you were video editing, mm -hmm. was music a, a full-time thing for you? Did you want it to be a full-time thing for you? No, music was never a full-time thing and even doing what I'm doing now is not really something that I thought I'd ever achieve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was brought up with the idea of you need like a real job. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I, I forever, like obviously it's it's anybody who plays music and writes music wants to do this as a job. Yeah. But, um, you know, in my head I was like, oh, it's, it's, it's probably not going to happen. I'm from a small town. Um, you know, where we don't really, ha we didn't really have many venues. Um, all I knew was I was addicted to writing songs mm -hmm. and, you know, I would do that every night. Um, and then when I wanted to record them, I'd have to go and play a few cover gigs to be able to afford to do that, mm -hmm. which was kind of soul destroying. Um, I only used to play songs that I liked, so yeah. it, w it wasn't so bad, but some nights were pretty rough. The ends justified the means. Yeah. Yeah. You do what you gotta do. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, um, there was a lot of years of doing that and... Um, working full time as well. So, um, but I was I was pretty lucky. Like I had I had a pretty creative job. Like I like editing and I like film. So you know I got to do that and maybe that helped. Maybe just you know keeping everything balanced. Like I was kind of doing my music and I was kind of doing some cover gigs and then I was um, doing my video stuff. So um, it was just I think the time it was just really exhausting. Uh -huh. When I look back on some nights, I'm like, wow, how did I fiddle that in one day? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess my next question is then, when did it turn? Or, or how did it turn? When did uh, this thing that you were doing a little bit, I guess, on the side become something that all of a sudden was your life, your entire life? Well, that that part actually feels like it came really quickly. Yeah, but yeah. Um, there was, you know, obviously there was a lot of knockbacks and then um, I kind of picked myself back up when I wrote, um, I wrote a couple of songs that were getting a little bit of traction and people were enjoying. And I was, I was kind of fumbling around my sound. I'm like, I still don't think I've found this sound that I want yet. Mm -hmm. You know, it was clear in my head, but I haven't, I hadn't got it out, um, recorded the way I wanted it yet. And um, I did a lot of research and I found um, a producer that I wanted to work with Obviously, I couldn't, he didn't, I was nobody um, and he was working with a lot of somebodies mm -hmm. and I couldn't really afford him. So I had to like apply for a grant um, and then beg his management to let um, the producer work with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just lucky that they liked my demos and I was actually going to go in and record a completely different song. And I wrote a door um, like two weeks before we were going to go and record. Yeah. And, um, and it, when I got it back, I was like, this is everything I want. This is exactly the sound I want. But I never thought that a door was going to be like, this is, this is the song that is going to change your life. Like, yeah. Uh, you've told the story about writing a door many, many times. Uh, one part that stuck out to me and it's cause I just don't know what it is. What's a lounge room. Like you, you said multiple room? times. What and so are you, and, what do you call it? Living, I, living well, room. That's the thing is like, yeah. I, I, I've seen you again, before you got here, just did a little bit of research. And again, I saw you tell that story and you keep referring to it as the lounge room. And I've just ne never heard and of I a lounge room. I say it's room. so Australian too. I've seen those of you. I'm like, yeah, I wrote it in my lounge room. I was sitting at night, <laughs> sitting in my lounge room. And I was like, dude, a lounge room sounds yeah. awesome. What's a I've got <laughs> such a big house and we have a lounge room. We have like... <laughs> the powder room, yeah. the gym, the theater and the lounge. A butler's so lounge. So it's like a living room. You're sitting in your it's apartment. It's like the tiniest little house that I live in on the Gold Coast. Yeah. And um, it's probably the size of this room. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even a little smaller. And um, yeah, so it's a room with a couch. Yes. We call them couches. Yeah, we do. We awesome. Sofa, couch. Sofa, yeah. Well, I know what you're talking about when cool. you say couch. Um, <laughs> yeah, so 
yeah, like that. I mean, I do that. I have done that sort of routine every night for like, I don't know, 15 years. So, Mm -hmm. um, especially when no one's home, like, you know, um, I've been through stages where, you know, you live with a bunch of housemates, you live with your friends, you live with your boyfriend. And it's like, as soon as no one's home, I'm like, oh, sweet. I get to like write some stuff and um, really like let it out. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, it was just like one of those nights. At what point did you decide to quit the job and focus completely on this? Was there a... uh a point in the life of the song where you're like, man, I have to devote all of my time to this, otherwise I'm going to miss out on something. Yeah, well, it wasn't actually until um, I signed to management. Okay. And they were like, you're going to have to leave this job. I yeah. know you like it a lot, but you're going to have to give it away. And I was like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so I just went back and like threw my desk up. And <laughs> you're like, I'm out here. <laughs> I'm going to do this job here no, in about a couple was, days. It w- that was sort of the time where they were like, you know, this is we're going to really do this. And, um, you know, because up until then I was pretty like – cautious and because yeah. I had a job I liked so I'm like you know I just want to be careful and mm-hmm. be, be certain that this is going to happen because um, obviously the industry you meet a lot of people and I had hardly met anyone but the people that I'd met hadn't been the best people so yeah. I you know I was always sort of like cautious that's a good way to be I don't know if people ever take into account how scary it must be to have something that has potential and it's sort of working or it appears as if it's working and then you just kind of put your real life aside and say, you know what, I'm going to go for this. That takes real guts, even if it seems obvious. And, and now it seems obvious with a sound a song like Adore. At the time, I'm sure it did not seem that obvious and took a little bit of guts. Yeah, it was It was a confusing time because, yeah. you know, you go through all these years where no one cares and then all of a sudden it's like, well, this is a little too good to be true. So yeah. what's the catch? <laughs> like yeah, what? Yeah, sure. when is, when's the bad stuff happening, you mm-hmm. know? But everything just kept, you know, going so great. And I've got a really great sort of team around me. And it's, um, yeah, I, I can't really see it failing. Like, I get to do what I love now. So it's it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the part of the interview right now that if it was a movie, it would be like kind of the montage of success. So a door right, okay. is uh, starting to take off. We have a graphic <laughs> of the song, like, going up the charts. If we had time, I'd act well. it out for you. Yeah. Like, do a bit of like... The Spotify clicks are going <laughs> over and over and over and over again. And uh, let's talk about the last year because it seems just like a whirlwind between touring Europe and between going uh, all over the U.S. with uh, guys like Vance Joy, uh, uh Bands like Bleachers and Jack Antonoff. Um, what has the last year been like for you? It's been busy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, so like, I never, you know, um, America is such a big um, sort of a big place. Mm, yeah. And I never thought that I'd ever be able to play sort of the rooms that I'm playing with the bands and the artists that I'm playing with. So it's, it's like, it's still kind of a little bit of a dream to me. Like mm-hmm. some nights I'm like, did I just play that? Like, yeah. you know, and you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm talking to people like Vance Joy, like Jack Andonoff and it's like, it's, it's awesome, you know, cause I'm learn I'm, I'm also playing with people who I really respect and they're just good people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, not, nothing's been a letdown yet, which is, which is fantastic. So what's been uh, surprising for you, everybody, whether or not it ends up and happens for you or it doesn't happen for you daydreams about, being in a band, playing music in front of people who are cheering and singing your song back to you. Uh, you are doing that now. Is it, uh, is it like you expected it or is it uh, a little bit different? What surprised you, I guess, about that experience? Uh, what surprised me? What surprised me is, um, I, is that I feel like the whole music industry has changed now because there was a time where I was like, I don't trust aud- audiences. Like yeah. people are like buying into so much so much watered down music and I was just like I don't fit this Mm -hmm. and now I'm like playing to these crowds that are like getting it and like people are just hungry for for really emotional songs and just they're so invested and um yeah I guess I'm just I'm just surprised by the people that line up in the freezing cold and then they get to the front and they're like they're just so so invested in every word that you're saying and you know I that that's blown my mind because um that's a that's a feeling that you know not everyone can understand and you can't really yeah. explain it even it's mm-hmm. so it's so overwhelming um but there's nothing really that I've been like um oh that's disappointing or you, you might meet someone that you thought was some going to be someone else that yeah. you're like oh they're, they're you know, they might they might not be who I thought they were, but you know, that's life. Yeah, I was gonna say that's that, that's life. I meant more just yeah, just just like going in and the days in and days out of, of traveling to all these cities and seeing all these places uh, has got to be an experience just uh, 
unlike maybe not unlike you've ever imagined, but uh, it's got. I, I just meant it had to be different in ways that you imagined. Oh yeah, yeah. well, there's no routine. Like yeah. every day is different, Which um, is fun. and it's it's fantastic. It's mm-hmm. like you know, I, if you've got to have a job and, and you've got to live your life, it's like this is the life I want to live. Yeah. It's so. Um, it's rewarding every day, whether it's someone who just writes to me saying, Hey, like I'm, I've just had my wedding and I danced to a door or it's going, um, even sound check. Like I'm getting stopped and like, Hey, like, yeah, we'll see your show. Like looking forward to it. Like people here really do their research yeah. in America. Like, especially like I'm, I've been the support. I'm not the main person, mm-hmm. but I feel like everyone really does their research and they know who's playing that night and. You know, because too many people are knowing the songs and I'm like, this yeah. is fantastic. Well, it's good. Never underestimate the uh, appetite for something real and, and something good, uh, especially in the music business, as you were kind of describing it earlier. It can be frustrating seeing um, certain songs and certain bands, not to diss anybody in particular, uh, but see success and, and just be like, man, how did that happen for that dude or <laughs> person or, or, or whatever um but there will always be a, a hunger for things that, that are real and uh things that come from the heart and uh if you have not yet watched uh the performance uh, of a door yet that we did it is it is exactly that it is real and it's from the heart it didn't come up here and, and take 25 minutes to uh, sound check and get the computer right and everything it's just uh, a guitar and a songwriter and a voice and that's I, know. I think that will always stand the test of time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. No, yeah, yeah, I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, a guy like Jack Antonoff, you've been spending some time with over the last couple of months. He as a performer is tremendous, obviously has a, a pedigree uh, in the production world as well. You learn anything from Jack? Oh my God. Like he, I've only, like I've sp- spoken to him a few times, but I've, he's got a show that I could watch every night. Yeah. Every night I'm just blown away by how amazingly entertaining and engaging and I don't know, like I already knew he was a a fantastic producer and like a total wordsmith, but like these shows are like blowing my mind, Mm -hmm. what you can create um, and, you know, just just what he's done and (laughs) even just his choice of words to the crowd in between. Like I'm learning every night. I'm just like, I'm, yeah, I'm just blown away every night. So I'm, yeah. It's another guy that does things for the right reasons. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, is is making music, not to make a paycheck, but uh, making music because even if he was, uh, wait, wait, what'd you call him? Did you call him cover gigs? (laughs) Even if he was doing cover gigs, he'd do those six nights a week because he just loved. Totally. And you can see that in his performance. He's so passionate. He's just like so invested in his music and um, yeah, presenting it. And yeah, everything he does, I think is at a very high level. A couple quick other things. Did you just go to an NFL game? Uh, yeah, I oh, went to one. Who was that? Um, where was it? It was New York. Yeah, Did you the Giants game. Oh my game? god, it was amazing. Everybody does their research. Because like in what? Because I'm like a typical Aussie. <laughs> I like try and be a tourist. <laughs> And I'm like, this is like the movies, you yeah. know? <laughs> was it was it fun? Did you have a good time? <laughs> yeah, it was good. it was awesome. But um, I was like, I I drink beer, like uh, I like beer, right? Me too. And yeah. when I got there, um, they didn't accept my license. So yeah. they, I needed my passport, yeah. so I got a really nice older lady who was sitting near me, and we now I I've got her on Facebook, and we made <laughs> nice, friends, and she's yeah. told me all about the team, and good. she was buying me drinks all day. Was, That's nice. It was like having my mom there buying me drinks. New York, nice job. Yeah, New York. Awesome. Um, and uh, James Corden. Uh, at the time that we are having this conversation, that's happening for you tomorrow night. By the time people experience this conversation, it probably already would have happened. Uh, first time on TV in the U.S. Yeah. First time on, not first time on TV anywhere. Uh, no, I've done TV in Australia okay, before. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's the same. But, Guy's yeah. got an accent. Well, it's the same. Don't worry about it. It's a big deal. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly bigger audience, but it doesn't matter because yeah. it's the same audience out there, same cameras. You're going to do awesome. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. I hope so. Um, congratulations. Uh, it, it, it's a cool story. It's even cooler and better when it comes, again, from someone uh, that... Again, just 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 has it as far as uh, the talent and the authenticity, and it's just it's just nice to see. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. I Thank you. Uh, the EP is out now. Again, uh, "Adore" is the name of the song that she performed. It is Amy Shark. It's all ninety eight seven, and I think that's that's probably yeah, that's probably it. <laughs>